and I enjoy developing mobile applications with uh, summary technology, uh, cloud computing applications with Azure, and also, of course, artificial intelligence, which is uh, my main uh, thesis topic. So, okay, that's uh, enough about me. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be here participating in the Global AI Bootcamp, uh, which is uh, around the world. Uh, so, yeah, pretty pretty excited to, to, to participate. Uh, yesterday and on Friday, we organized our own in Latin America, so it was mainly in Spanish. And yeah, it was a great event. So, yeah, I'm also happy to contribute. So, let's go to our topic. All right. So, as you know, um, the traditional ML, traditional machine learning, sorry for, for this Spanish word, <laughs> um, uh, you know that there are several scenarios. There is uh, supervised learning where we know the labels that we will be using for uh, training the images. Um, of course, if we are given uh, a task to solve, let's call it task A, uh, maybe we would like to identify um, dog races. Of course, we will also need images from that domain, which is uh, dog images from uh, different uh, kinds, okay? So there might be images of uh, bulldogs, images of um, terrier dogs, uh, dog shepherds, and so on. So we have, we, we want to build a model that can identify some uh, dog race. And it makes sense to have images related to the to that the task. Um, a task, of course, is the objective that our model aims to perform, such as recognizing objects in images. And the domain is where our data is coming from, such as uh, images. Yeah. We can train the model based on this data set and we will expect it to perform well on unseen data, uh, which is images that we didn't use for the uh, training, if they belong to the same test, task and domain. If we are given uh, data from some other task or from some domain B, maybe uh, a picture of me, <laughs> Well, this is different. This is out of the scope of uh, domain and task A. So if we would like to identify, let's say, a picture of me, well, we will. Th this is a different task, and we will require different images, which is from different domain. So as you can see, the supervised learning paradigm breaks when we don't have enough labeled data for a different task. If we want to train a model to perform a new task, we cannot uh, reuse the previous model because the labels are different. So let's uh, briefly talk about uh, deep learning. OK, so we, we just mentioned some traditional scenario in machine learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning where the objective is to identify uh, data patterns. It's related, of course, with the previous task. Uh, deep learning is optimized for uh, to, to, to be trained with uh, tons of information. 
with a deep number of uh, neural networks and layers, it is quite effective and optimized to perform these kind of tasks. And through the process, it builds connections, it identifies what do you need in order to successfully uh, classify uh, some data. So maybe we can build a model that correctly identifies from thousands of categories and for the training we use also thousands of images so you can imagine how many pictures how many images how much data we will need to build such a model in deep learning it is quite common that we also required um, hardware, uh, powerful hardware. Mm, because, well, there are, of course, a lot of uh, combinations, a lot of uh, information that is analyzed. And, um, but of course, uh, well, it, it works, it works. But then there is this uh, requirement. We will go through through this, or that, that is actually the main purpose of, of this task, how to overcome that situation. Because deep learning is quite powerful. It has an automated learning process that relies on the deep neural networks, on the multi-layer features that are identified in this data representations and how it works well basically we have a picture for instance that that's our data but of course deep learning is not uh, um, only related with images it can work with uh, audio uh, files with text for instance so yeah we we, we can have uh, different uh, data sources let's Let's say, or let's describe the process with an image, picture. So, okay, we have a picture of a room, maybe. And in deep learning, we start identifying low level features. That is, we analyze pixels, we analyze bytes. And using some mathematical operations that we will uh, describe or explain in the next two slides, we can um, determine mid-level features and also high-level features. These two um, matrices of the data matrices are called convoluted images. And the idea is that we start from some basic information and we and then we continue um, expanding the areas of information where data patterns are um, are uh, determined or identified thanks to these convoluted images. Well, it's a convoluted image. We, we will explain it in the, in the next slide. But yeah, we, we apply some mathematical operations. We then determine some high level features. As you can see, there are some colors. There are maybe some parts of the um, picture that and maybe we can use this to to, to determine some objects like okay there is a bed here there is a, a desk there is a window so maybe this wall picture is about a bedroom or uh, the interior of a house 
The objective, of course, in this case is to uh, build a classifier, correct? So, so yeah, we can identify some objects, but we started from some basic information and then we build knowledge. And how do we calculate this mid-level and higher uh, level features? Well, the basic operation is known as a convolution. So we have our input image, which is uh, which are numbers uh, or um, matrix of numbers, and we um, create and we use a filter. A filter is also a set of numbers. In this case, we are we using a filter of uh, four elements. So we use or we go through the input image with a filter of the same size. And the objective is to determine a convoluted image. Basically, we take um, uh, some information from the input image and we apply a mathematical function, mathematical operation using the filter, such as uh, multiplication of these two sets of information. So you can see here, we, we uh, calculate value a value using this information from the input image and the filter. And after this, we will calculate a value and that value is sent to the convoluted image matrix. Then we move through the input image and we repeat the process. We calculate the second value, which is sent to the convoluted image uh, or feature map uh, matrix. And we go through, we continue. We repeat this process until the feature map is uh, fully calculated. And we continue to do that. Uh, I mean, we repeat the process again to calculate um, higher level features. But in between, in between the convolutions, we also perform another operation, which is known as pooling. And this is a very easy uh, operation. Again, we have input matrix, maybe a feature map. And we use uh, uh, some rule, or we apply a rule. Maybe we would like to apply a max pooling rule with a two by two filter and a stride value of two. I will explain what is that. The filter size is basically how many elements, rows and columns we would like to analyze or apply a, a, a rule. So in this case, we set filter of two by two. Okay, so two rows, two columns, four elements in total. And if we are applying max pooling, it means that we are going to obtain the highest value from this subset. So of course, if we have one, three, four, two, highest value is four. And then a stride value means, okay, after that, I will mo move two elements to the right, which means now we start here. So five, three, three, one, the highest value is five. We have analyzed all the items in the, in the row. Now we go down, we, we start again from the first column and we go down also two elements. So if we started here in uh, position 0, 0, maybe, we go 
to, um, to we, mo we move two rows, okay? And we see now three, one, zero, one, the highest value is three, and we go through the input matrix. We can instead use average pooling, and as the name suggests, instead of um, obtaining the highest value, we calculate the average of uh, the, the items that we are analyzing. So it depends on the rule that we would like to apply. So we perform this several times and we the, the output is a convolutional neural network. On this process is known as convolutional neural network. And basically we have the picture, we have the input image, we apply or we determine, okay, we are going to use this filter of this size, maybe 64. Then we apply max pooling, we repeat the process, calculate another convoluted image, apply another pooling, convoluted image, max pooling, and so on. Yes. So we repeat the process several times, and each of these, of course, is a neural network. So that's why it is deep. And at the end, we will uh, obtain a vector with uh, maximum values. And this vector is uh, used, is uh, combined yeah, with other layers. And after that, at the end, we are building the classifier. So we will, th this will identify what elements um, belong to a room, a bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, and so on. Okay. Of course, this involves several calculations, uh, data analysis, and that's the reason we need uh, some uh, resources, hardware resources, such as GPU, GPUs, because, yeah, because a lot of uh, mathematical operations. Uh, and, yeah, w w why do we apply uh, deep learning? Because these algorithms are optimized for uh, image analysis or for audio or even text. But the, uh, um, no matter or regardless of the amount of data that you have, the algorithm is still performing in a, in a let's say, acceptable uh, way. The traditional machine learning or older learning algorithms suffer if you provide uh, many data, a, 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 a lot of data. Of course, again, the issue is that deep learning requires high-end machines, uh, GPUs, but the, the, the output is a classifier or a model that is accurate. But yeah, there are a lot of combinations. So now let's introduce to the topic of transfer learning and how it is related with deep learning. Uh, please, uh, if there are any questions, I would be glad to answer them. Just uh, type them uh, in the chat and yeah. Okay, so for the moment I see no questions, but um, I, um, okay, I, I will check uh, back uh, later in case something is not clear, just let me know. Okay, so transfer learning. We go back to this, um, to this image. A machine learning method where a model was developed for a task can be reused as the starting point for a model on a second task. 
we will have the same domain, related images, but the task is different. The task is different, but related. Basically, we are taking advantage of the knowledge that was previously uh, acquired, yes, when we built the first model, yes. So this knowledge is now applied to a second task. This task is not the same as the first one, but it is related. So that, that's why we are calling this one transfer learning. Okay, we are not building a model from scratch. We are reusing something uh, that was previously uh, generated. Basically, transfer learning is a popular approach in deep learning where pre-trained models are used as the starting point on tasks such as computer vision, natural language processing tasks. Of course, initially, and as I mentioned, for this uh, complicated, let's say, tasks, uh, computational resources are required to create, to develop these neural network models. But transfer learning optimizes this because we can generate new models and we don't require uh, these uh, high computational resources. We can even create a second model in matter of seconds of me or minutes. Maybe we will need only 10 images and we can create a second model that identifies new categories. Okay, new categories, but still related with the first uh, model. So this is an improvement of uh, deep learning. Okay, so we can apply it to new task, new domain, but related. And well, this slide uh, basically sums up what we mentioned. Traditional learning is isolated and occurs, uh, let's say, on the basis of that there are specific tasks, uh, data sets, and we train mod isolated models on this data. The knowledge is not retained, cannot be transferred from one model to another. However, in transfer learning, you can leverage the knowledge such as, and what is the knowledge, by the way? Well, it can be features, it can be weights, it can be the patterns that were identified. So this knowledge is, um, would you take advantage of, of this knowledge from the previously trained models and we can create new models and we can also tackle program problems and we don't require uh, huge amounts of data for this new task and these process processes are not as isolated okay so yeah Um, and okay, if we go technical, how does it work? In transfer learning, we first train a base network on a base data set and task. You delete the loss output layer. If you remember this uh, image, we delete the last layer that identifies some uh, specific classes. 
we replace that one uh, with a new one for generalizations. This uh, loss output layer, it's a fine tuning to determine uh, the new labels or to predict this output. If I might show you, for instance, yeah, this is the demo, but um, I want you to take a look at um, the model that we are going to use, which is the inception model. Maybe you have heard of about it. So for instance, let me, let me open the, the model that we are going to use or reuse actually. <clears throat> so this uh, inception network is a pre-trained model that successfully identifies thousands of categories. Uh, it can identify uh, a specific categories of uh, fruits, for instance, okay, if you provide an image of a banana, it can identify it of an apple, of a dog, um, some, uh, maybe a picture of a teddy bear can be identified, vacuum cleaner, and so on. So, of course, this network or this model involves thousands of images, thousands of categories, also a lot of time and resources to, to, to create this model. And you can see, for instance, here, uh, some convolution, some max pooling operation that we mentioned. Yep. And it is a huge one. This is the architecture of, of this network or convolution network. There are a lot of operations, so you can imagine. And um, the, the the complexity, okay, of this. So let me go through because in deep learning, sorry, yeah. So th this was generated with deep learning techniques, but in transfer learning, the idea is not to calculate this again. We are going to open this model and just replace the final layer. Replace, uh, sorry, yeah, replace this part. Please remember this name, softmax to preactivation, because we are going to use it later in the in the in the demo when we apply the transfer learning. Okay. But yeah. We, we have uh, each uh, element, of course, has a name. So here in this softmax, uh, which is used to identify the specific uh, categories, we are going to replace this with some new calculations, some new layer that identifies different categories. OK? Yes. Uh, related with the with the, with the previous task. Okay. So we don't have to calculate or generate this the the rest again. Okay. So let's leave it uh, there for for the moment. Okay. Good. So let's uh, continue back to our presentation. Uh, so yeah, we mentioned that we are going to replace it, but how? Well, we, we will take a smaller data set that has general labels. So instead of, uh, yes, we, will, we are going to have maybe a picture of a banana, of an apple, uh, of a pineapple, but instead of saying or, or labeling this every image with the specific tag 
we are going to say, okay, this is a picture of a banana. Okay, the category or the label is a fruit. This is a picture of an orange, yes, but the label is also fruit. This is a picture of a pizza, the label is food, and so on. Our first network successfully identifies banana, pizza, apple, and so on. But now our new task is to build a model that identifies these general categories. Yes. So we, are, we don't need a lot of images for this new task. Yes, the images are related with the domain and also the task is similar. Mm, but uh, this process or this new process uh, will reuse the uh, neural network that was created before. Okay, and we just replace the, the loss layer. The output will be a new convolutional neural network that identifies general elements. We don't require a lot of data, a lot of time, a lot of computational resources. Okay. So yeah, well, transfer learning only works in deep learning if the model features learned from the first task are general. Of course, we need the pre-trained model. Uh, we don't start from scratch. We already mentioned this. I already explained that uh, we are going to use the inception network. Uh, this is uh, one of the most well-known uh, networks used in deep learning in image classification. It was a um, uh, um, great development. I mean, one of the key uh, introductions for, for deep learning uh, tasks. Of course, it, uh, it is computationally expensive. I mean, to, to generate a new inception uh, network or model. You already saw the, the complexity, you already saw a, a lot of layers there. Of course, there are thousands of images in this uh, inception or other networks. And yeah, each image has a label, a specific label. OK, so as we mentioned, we are going to identify in our example general categories. Uh, we are going to provide some images, some pictures to um, to, to classify uh, or to use three categories, food, toy, and appliance. And actually, for instance, you, you can see it in, in the project. We have some images. Oops, sorry. Um, yeah. we, we have these images. So, for instance, we have some picture of a broccoli, yes, uh, pizza. And here, actually, in this file, we are labeling, okay, these, uh, maybe the first three elements belong to food category, then we have some pictures of a teddy bear and they are uh, classified as toys. And maybe we have a toaster and these two are identified or the new category name is appliance. Okay. We are going to transfer the learning that was generated in the model. The inception model successfully identifies broccoli, pizza, a teddy bear, toaster. Yes, there are a specific task, tasks for that. But now we are going to create a new model with a new purpose. 
the task is related because, of course, as gen in generalization, this this is food. This is yeah. This these are food. We cannot use. We can't use. We cannot use images that were not. Uh, which are not related with the first task, okay? We have we have to use something similar. Yes, new labels, but still similar, okay? So before going into that, let's talk about ML.net, and we are going a bit uh, fast because yeah, time is uh, running. Uh, I think we still have 20 minutes, but still we, we have to go through the demo. Of course, when we are um, performing uh, or building uh, machine learning projects or deep learning projects, we mostly use Python. But did you know that you can also use your knowledge from C Sharp or F Sharp skills to create machine learning projects? Well, this is possible thanks to ML.NET, which is an open source and cross-platform framework for building machine learning projects, experiments in .NET. To start with uh, this technology, you don't need uh, data science knowledge or expertise. And you leverage your C sharp or F sharp skills. As we mentioned, it's a cross platform. It means that you can use ML.NET in Linux, in Mac, in Windows. And you can export the models that you build. Uh, and put them on Azure, on an on-premises server, any cloud, actually. We can take the model and include it in a web API, maybe, uh, to accept requests uh, from mobile application or from a website or from other technology, even, not only .NET. You can create... Uh, sentiment analysis projects, fraud detection, uh, price prediction, classify images, detect the spam. There are a lot of possibilities uh, for machine learning, for ML.NET, sorry, in the machine learning area. Of course, uh, you can integrate or you can use uh, some libraries for interoperability, such as TensorFlow, Onyx, and also PyTorch. And you can uh, leverage, and this is related with our topic, uh, you can include, you can uh, reuse the knowledge gain uh, with pre-trained pre mod models, uh, such as Inception, ResNet, YOLO, and others, not only in the field of image classification or object detection. You can also use uh, WaveNet, for instance, which is a model for speech and audio. You can perform natural language processing and so on. So how the transfer learning is performed in our project. So we can start a, a project, console application maybe, uh, for ML.NET, we need to add a Microsoft.ML NuGet package. And for this specific purpose, transfer learning, we also need uh, to include these other uh, packages. Microsoft ML Image Analytics, TensorFlow, Vision, and C-Sharp TensorFlow Redist. And depending on the uh, operative system, maybe we also need uh, some other libraries. In this case, for Mac, I need this one, System Drawing uh, Runtime OS X. We, I already mentioned this. We have this data. We have uh, a file with the tags, with the labels. Okay, we have the 
each row of data has two properties the image path and the category or label okay this is our data as you can see not all the pictures are included in the uh, file in the tags.tsb why because the rest will be used for date for model validation okay so okay we have one picture of a broccoli and the category is food we have two pictures of a pizza the category is also food and so on mm, i mentioned that there were two properties and they are uh, used in the input data model so we have a class with these two properties image path and label uh, but the most important thing is the attribute first column second column okay uh, for the image prediction we also have another class which inherits from image data that is these two columns and also the score and the predicted label uh, we also need to know the pre-trained model settings in this case, Inception uh, requires images, uh, square-sized images, uh, 2024. If we are using different model, we need to know uh, what, what is the uh, input uh, format and maybe some other properties. Since we want to uh, perform image classification and more than two categories, uh, this is a multi-class classification task so we have to select uh, algorithms from this field and then a, a specific trainer uh, we have different possibilities we are going to use uh, lbfgs okay um, then we uh, in ml.net we built a pipeline this pipeline is like a plan it's a chain of activities that we are going to um, apply to our data in order to uh, train the model later so for instance and, and this is the key part do you remember this uh, name softmax to preactivation this is the layer that we are going to uh, transform or replace yes we are loading actually there is uh, yeah here you can see there is this instruction uh ml context sorry yes this one ml context model and we have load tensorflow model and of course this is the path where our pb file is so this is the start of the transfer learning yes and we have the uh, this uh, layer that we want to replace with uh, the input layer uh, and before we perform some uh, data transformation okay here we specify the task sorry the yeah the, yeah well the task and the trainer okay and and after that of course we um, specify the name of the uh, label this predictable label this one uh, is needed for the output predictable label value okay and um, yeah basically this so this is the pipeline this is the plan nothing is performed here until we use the fit method this fit is actually the model training part okay and after 
less than one minute, uh, we obtain a deep learning model with less than 10 images. Of course, it is based on previously trained model. And we can evaluate the accuracy. We can obtain some uh, metrics. Um, this is, of course, something um, well known in the machine learning field, of course. So we obtain, in this case, uh, log loss and classification log loss. And that's it. After that, we can run the application. And yeah, this is the expected output. Of course, we are going to run it live. And this image is predicted as appliance. Of course, we are going to demonstrate that. And this, this was for the validation. Broccoli 2, Pizza 3. This, of course, these three images were not used in the training. Yes. So yeah, let's to the demo part. Okay, we are all of some time. So let's do it because yeah, I see some questions. So this is the project that I described in the slides. It's the same one. Let's run it. Um, for the there is toaster four and thirty nine. Yeah, here I might show you. Is 34 and no, uh, a second. Okay, toaster for 39. Ah, this one is, yeah, this two. These two will be used later for the prediction. So I think it is running. Yeah, you can see the, the project is already running here. Uh, the training part. It, as I said, it will not take uh, a lot of time for, for the training. Um, so yeah, maybe in the meantime, I can take a look at the questions. OK, I see one question from Priyanka. Thank you. The MLNet model build can be consumed by other Python programs, or are we limited to Azure C Sharp? Uh, OK, yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, from my understanding, uh, yes, this model uh, can be, well, it's actually a serialization. It includes uh, some image, uh, sorry, so, some data structure, some model. And I think, yes, it is only available uh, for C sharp consumption. Uh, I need to. Um, to, to check again the documentation, but as far as I know, yes, it is only, let's say, for consumption of, of C Sharp. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot uh, recreate or export the model as a TensorFlow, for instance, uh, format. That, that would be great because that will connect everything, let's say, back to Python. Uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, mm, I think it's only limited for, for C Sharp. OK, so I will reply to the second question just in a minute. As you can see now, we, we see the, the result here. We see uh, in the first uh, part here, this is uh, the, the validation, yes, Broccoli 2. This, of course, picture uh, Broccoli 2 was not, again, uh, used for the training. You see there is only Broccoli, but no Broccoli 2. Yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. So yeah, in the validation, this was identified as food. This other picture of pizza is also food. Teddy is a toy, yes. So you see the metrics here. And the new images toaster for, which you saw here. Yeah. This picture was identified as an appliance. Oops. Mm. Okay, I think I lost that. Ah, it's you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you see, Toaster 4 is appliance. Yes? Oh, sorry. Um, 
Okay, I, I am a bit of yeah. Toaster 4 is appliance and Teddy is a toy. Yes. It didn't take too long to build this model. One minute, maybe. And we can now uh, categorize these um, new labels. Yes, new, let's say, features. And uh, yeah, basically, basically that's it. Uh, and this is not, uh, we, we don't need a lot of uh, lines of code, maybe a bit more than 100, but it's also because I have the classes here. I have uh, some variables just to specify the information. Okay, the, where is the data coming from? But the, the main code is less than 50 lines. Yes. So yeah, just to conclude and go to, for questions, uh, why should I care about transfer learning? Well, this is a key element that will drive machine learning success in the coming years, well, even today. These are not my words. These are Mr. Andrew Eng, uh, uh words or prediction <laughs> you know uh he he he's a, a well-known person in, in this uh, ai and machine learning uh, area so yeah the, uh, he he supports or strongly believes uh, that transfer learning is really important because it also makes deep learning more accessible to uh to to everyone because we don't need uh, this uh, such powerful uh, resources or computational resources okay uh, here uh, there are some resources to uh, continue or to start your uh, career or your knowledge in ml.net there are samples documentation videos uh, and we mentioned that this is a, it's an open source project, so you can also contribute. Yes. And, uh, well, I, I will leave this uh, slide uh, for a moment while I check uh, from other questions. Uh, Priyanka also asked, thanks. Um, when we are using the image classification API, do we have only the DNN architecture choices that are provided by the API? Uh, yes, for the moment, this is uh, some uh, limitation mm, because even to, to build a deep learning, um, let's say architecture, or sorry, um, experiment, you are based on uh, some uh, architecture, yes. Uh, it's a limitation. Um, for the moment, later maybe, um, we can build something from scratch uh, with ML.net. Uh, actually, this uh, image classification is uh, a bit uh, new, maybe, or I mean, it appeared in newer versions of ML.net. So uh, there are there is a this is a work in progress. Maybe in the future we will be able to. To, to, to create uh, deep learning uh, experiments uh, and we would we will not need some um, pre-trained models okay um, yeah so uh, can this be a case for transfer learning we teach a bot to fetch live weather updates then use the knowledge to expand it to let it Fitch live sports updates now. Mm, well, the transfer learning, um, th these two tasks have to be uh, related. Basically, in transfer learning, you build uh, generalizations, uh, as we mentioned. Um, and th this would be two separate or different tasks. Um, because well, one is related with weather, the other one is with a uh, update. Well, you you can use it to, for instance, uh, may, maybe in the 
uh, whether updates you have like okay it is uh, snowing it is hailing it is um, i don't know and there is a, a snow storm something like that and you can maybe uh, group this into uh, extreme weather for instance or maybe you have a breeze, rain, uh, you have uh, showers in the first task. And for the second one, you, um, you, you have uh, just rain or, uh, I don't know, fresh, fresh uh, weather, for instance. The, the idea in transfer learning is that the task B, the second task, uh, you, you can use maybe uh, some uh, images that you would also use for the first task, but now for new labels. Okay, I, I, I don't know if I explain it correctly. Ho hopefully, I, I would. I, I did, but 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 yeah. Of, of, of course, what you can you can use it uh, for different applications. Mm. But but the, the, the idea is that um, the, the knowledge yes is uh, repurposed okay uh, you you um, you learn something new but related with the with the first task okay I, I, I hope it makes sense if not just let me know and we can of course uh, uh, chat and talk more about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. Thank you for your interesting questions. Um, okay, we I think we are almost on time. So thank you very much for for your attention. Um, let's be in touch. This is my email, also a Twitter hashtag. If you would like to uh, talk uh, more or to discuss about these interesting topics, I will be glad to to tag along. So this was transfer learning for deep learning using TensorFlow and ML.NET for the global AI bootcamp in Singapore. Keep enjoying the event and see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>